It's officially 25 days to the commencement of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. And of course, here on Nigeria Super Fans Forum, we'll continue our daily countdown. Welcome. My name is Oluwafemi Ashalu. And today, we'll uh, take a trip to Morocco where uh, Emerald Luza, of course, uh, a, a Watford player, his World Cup dream has come to an end after suffering an ankle injury. Of course, here on the show, we've talked about um, uh, players picking injuries, uh, key players for their national teams are uh, picking injuries ahead of the tournament. Well, I remember Carl Dewey that always said that um, uh, that this is a World Cup like you that indeed it is living up uh, to that. Unfortunately, Carl Dewey couldn't join us. Uh, but today, of course, James Agberi is in the studio to break things down nicely. James, you're welcome. Thank you, Femi. Okay, of course, yesterday we were here, we talked about uh, the injury to Alexander Jiku. Yeah. And of course, another African will not be going to the World Cup. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, Imran Lusa, of course, a French born uh, player for Watford, he plays for Watford, and he suffered um, an ankle injury that unfortunately he will be going to the World Cup. And quickly, let me a, a quote. He, he put out a statement uh, on his, uh, on his uh, Twitter and he said, Hard news to accept. One of my biggest dreams has gone. I have no choice but to get up and fight. I'll come back stronger than ever. Franz Bon Lusa has said on Twitter. Uh, James, it is very sad. Very Something that you've been looking forward yeah. to. And unfortunately, why in action for your team, the dream uh, vanished away. You know, the dream of every footballer is to play at the World Cup. You know, that's the highest level um, any footballer wish to, to, to get to. Um, we've had... Um, uh, greats who never had the opportunity to play at the World Cup. People like uh, Betty Pelé, Tony Yeboah, George uh, Ware, the late uh, George Best, uh, Ryan Giggs. Even Ryan Giggs. You know, <laughs> these guys never had the opportunity. Yeah. And for someone to now get so close on injury now... Participated in the qualifiers, exact, I mean, in the playoff. So, it's, it's so sad. This, this one period, a lot of footballers are, are afraid of. Of course, like we said yesterday, um, the, the fixture pile up, you know, the everything. I know as a player, if fatigue sets in, it's so easy to get injured. Hmm. And, and sometimes you might even be running, you might not, there might not even be any contact. You just, you know, get injured. I remember Jiku, sorry, Jiku, uh, in that game against Toulouse, it, it, it wasn't not that, it, though he made a challenge. Yeah. And it seems that it was okay. And all of a sudden, he went down he went and down. called for attention. <laughs> and that was it. Uh, we saw what happened to, like we mentioned, um, uh, before uh, Varan, the way he landed, and he immediately just knew that my work up, <laughs> up is gone. Yeah, my work up is gone. You know, so um, this is a period that a lot of players are afraid of because um, they know that any slight, it's as if you don't even need any any hard tackle to oh. to get injured. You know, so that you might be you might be running, you might just hold the your arms. Stretch is already there. Everything is there, so the body is just breaking down, and. Um, so I don't even need anybody to even give you any serious tackle before you break down. I, I think the money FIFA will be, uh, will be paying to clubs, whose players will play at the World Cup is to say, okay, this is for Panando. <laughs> <is for> <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's, it's not a good one. Um, this is somebody who helped Morocco to qualify for the World Cup. Mm -hmm. And now after, it's like Moses who, who, who led the people, but he didn't get the opportunity to, mm -hmm. to see the promised land, you know. Uh, a lot of people are just one, even though it's, it means just to make just one appearance. I mean, that, this is what ruled uh, Mikel will be out in the 2010 um, World Cup. He helped Nigeria to qualify for the World Cup. Unfortunately, injury ruled him out. Yeah. You know, so so many players like that. You know, so uh, I feel I feel for the player. Um, to what he has to do now is to start a recovery. And I don't know his age. Should at least. He's still, he's still, he's still a young within, player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least by yeah. the next World Cup, Morocco yeah. qualified. But the sad part there then. is we don't know like, if Morocco, Morocco qualified. will qualify. That's another thing again. You know? So I uh, wish him all the best. You just have to... It's part of the game. Mm -hmm. Injury is always part of football. And um, it's sad that he, he, he is the, the latest victim mm -hmm. <laughs> of the injury ball. Yeah. That is uh, ramp rampaging everywhere, you know, ravaging the, 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 the football world. And um, I just hope that you... You bounce back and uh, look forward to, to other uh, major tournaments that he can represent his country. Mm. So, Imra Luza, I would say to you, uh, just chin up. And of course, the uh, Morocco national team coach, uh, Walid Eregwagui, has also confirmed that uh, yeah, the guy will not be going uh, to the 2025 World Cup. Uh, James, let's again uh, turn our attention to Ghana. Uh, the is, remember uh, some time ago, we talked on the show about uh, Otoado stepping down after the uh, World Cup from his current position. 
we do not know for certain if the criticisms are from Ghanaians are getting, uh, to, him. Are getting to him. Uh, because a former player, uh, Joado, has uh, lambasted the Ghana Football Association uh, for going to the World Cup with so-called part-time part coach. coach. I think um, at this point, I think everyone needs to stop criticizing Otoado and give him their full support, just like, of course, uh, President Nana Kufuado had done. Uh, but quickly, I'll read uh, the statement credited to Joado. He said, the Ghana national team is going to play uh, the most important tournament in our history, the World Cup. We've done it three times. We missed in Russia, and we are going there with a part-time coach. Are you kidding me in this day and age? Hell no, he told Ghana One TV. He said, we have to have a substantive coach to go to the World Cup. That's my opinion. I could be wrong, but I cannot go to a very important tournament with an interim coach. Why? He said, we don't have the resources to hire a permanent coach, or does the coach uh, not want to be permanent? So, either we have a permanent coach who is taking us to the World Cup, or we don't have a coach. James. Well, Joado, um, that's his own opinion. Because where are the permanent uh, coaches? Where are the, the top coaches? <laughs> when Ghana would, was... Um, Maybe they were not given the chance. Uh, well, he has done it. He, he has qualified the team for the, for the World Cup. He, he, for him to even come out to take the job then, I mean, kudos to him. And he has qualified for the, uh, the, the team for the World Cup. And uh, he has uh, what he needs now, uh, all the encouragement. He doesn't need any... Uh, criticism because he didn't appoint himself. He put himself forward and he, I hired him and he delivered. Have they even approached him? Yeah. It's possible know. that they approached him. Yeah, for the for the job. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe if he just felt okay, he just said, okay, let me just for my country and he was able to deliver the tickets for them. Yeah. You know, so he doesn't need any the, the work up is so close now. Just twenty five days to go and there. Uh, now the team, what the team needs now is um, focus. focus, concentration, well, encouragement. That thank God they have another, sweet, uh, another friendly game against Switzerland. So that was another opportunity for the coaching crew to, to assess the team so that we're able to know the kind of formation they'll come up with. They don't need all this uh, criticism. We've heard a lot of criticism, a lot of bashing the team, the coaches. Now what they need now is encouragement and uh, I mean, the World Cup is so close now for you to start shopping for a new coach. Which coach is going to take over the team now and perform magic? It's not even going to be possible. No, it's not going to be possible. So, what they need now is support, encouragement, motivation, just like what the president did. He came out to say, okay, let's back this team. Let's back. We don't have any other Black Stars team. This is the team that everybody should focus on and, and support than um, coming out to, to complain, shout. Uh, criticized and I mean it, it's too late now. Mm -hmm. I mean it's just just too, too late, late to cry. Too late to cry. So let's leave uh, Coach uh, Adu and his uh, coaching crew and just hope for the best for the team. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when James mentioned the uh, Switzerland, that Ghana will be playing Switzerland. That uh, of course took my mind back to the fact that it would be of interest to come around. Remember uh, they're in the same group with Switzerland, Serbia, and uh, Brazil for uh, the World Cup. And James, something actually also came to my mind, and. Um, I feel that um, it's something we should look at yeah. during the countdown. How Rogobasson came into the picture as the choice for the Cameroon national team through Samuel Leto, mm. who was his former teammate. teammate yeah. I think it's something we need, we need to look at. Remember yesterday, I think we talked about um, Rogobasson, right? Yeah. About if you feel he's the right man for, uh, for the job. Mm. But Fekafu decided that he should be given the job. So I think someday we need to uh, look at But let's look at Ado before uh, we leave the studio. James, in what way do you think he should reply to these critics? It's do you think he needs to do the extra in order to, at least to give these critics uh, at least some reply? The first game is against Portugal. It yeah. is very, very crucial. Game, and yeah. that is going to determine how far they're going yeah. to go in the group, not to even talk of the tournament. Mm. So what do you think he needs to do, at least to silence these critics? Well, no other thing than to just um, win your game, win your games and uh, qualify the team for the next round. And you just have to do well. That's the only way you shut your, criti your, t your critics up. But if they play against Switzerland and lose, I mean, the criticism will, <laughs> will intensify. So, it still has something to so prove, right? Just have Do, to, it's, it's, about winning. To it's about winning. You just have to win your games. That's the only way you, 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 you get these people off your back. Because they, they believe that uh, Ado is not too, is not good enough to handle the, the, the black So who is? Well, um, yeah, there's <laughs> no... question there's I think no, they should answer. Yeah, there, there's no perfect coach anywhere. Um, in Milovan, who, who, who handled the coach, the, the team in, in the past? We also what happened at the AFCON before they had to kick him out. And uh, 
Ado had to come in and salvage, you know. So already terrible yeah, situation. Yeah, on a rescue mission and he was able to deliver. So what he needs now is to just do well, come up with the best strategy formation to, to make sure the team does well because all eyes on him now. All eyes, everybody there. There are those who want him to fail to justify <laughs> why he shouldn't have been there in the first place. But there are those who, for patriotism, I mean, you just have to be patriotic now. There's no going back now. The, the World Cup is too close to start all this um, wailing and shouting that, no, he's a part-time coach, it's this, is that. I mean, he has, he has qualified the team for the World Cup. He's on record that Otto Ado qualified Ghana for the World Cup. He has uh, replicated the feat of Kwesiapia, uh, uh, yeah. Milovan, and uh, the other coach who, who took them to the 2006 World Cup. So he just need the backing now. He doesn't deserve uh, any criticism now. Mm. He's qualified for the team for the World Cup, and let's give him the encouragement so that he's able to, to, to do well with the team at the World Cup. Mm. So please, if you know where injury lives, I think we need to tell him to leave African players alone. We've had, uh, we have more than enough already. That doesn't leave African players, players even, uh, other top players in other countries. Okay, yeah. of course, but we are here yeah. for uh, for African teams because we want them to do well at the World Cup. Surely for Ghana, we need them to do well. So please, if you know where he lives, please tell him to leave African players alone because the World Cup uh, is just right here. And for uh, Imran Luza, of course, he needs to chin up. And like he said, he said he'll be back as strong. And for Tuado, I think... Um, um, you just need to go to the World Cup and these critics put them to silence uh, permanently. James Iberibi, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for me. Okay, so tomorrow is going to be 24 days before uh, the World Cup. So we'll continue our countdown tomorrow. Please stay with us. And for you, thank you for always being there for us, uh, for your comments, uh, for your words of encouragement, and of course, also uh, for where you want us to uh, make some improvement. We've imbibed everything and we're going to take uh, the right step. Thank you very much. Until tomorrow, bye for now. Thank you.